Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Austrian campaign in the Balkans. Where we last left off, we had taken the city of Belgrade and secured the province of Serbia. There, our forces are now resting and being replenished. In the meantime, the Ottomans have assembled a small-ish force, more like a medium-sized force, uh, near the Trepcha mines. And they will probably attempt to liberate, uh, or rather retake Belgrade uh, from us soon. However, they do not have the manpower to do that yet, so I wonder if they will just occupy the mines and try and uh, gut our economy further, as there is quite a bit of wealth to be gained from just the mines and the local villages around. That said, though, wealth is kind of going to be the topic for a while. Austria finds itself in a precarious position. Namely, it is simply unable to send reinforcements to the south, to the front lines, effectively, due to a lack of funding. Um, there are projects and problems in the north that are taking up some money. The garrison in Silesia is a little bit of the little part of that problem. However, mostly uh, replenishing, reinforcing, and supplying the armies already on the front lines with ammunition and um, fresh recruits to replace the dead have already been weighing too heavily on the Austrian budget. Um, if they were to recruit more regiments and uh, flood the south with, um, with additional forces, they could find themselves bankrupt. So, currently, there will be very few soldiers added to the front lines. This is it, effectively. Um, which means every single battle against the Ottomans is going to be very, very important, and uh, potential loss of regiments and armies um, could be... not could be, but very, very much will be devastating for the war effort. Um, on top of that, as the Austrian army conquers, it will also need to repair the damaged infrastructure, buildings, um, villages, mines, etc., etc., towns that they... Um, that they secure, mainly to avoid revolts, though the one thing making the entire process easier and uh, less, um, um, shall we say, complicated, is the fact that most of the population of the Balkans do not exactly like living under Ottoman rule, or uh, at this point, did not like living under Ottoman rule, uh, although the Austrian government is foreign, and the Austrian official state religion is foreign to them as well, most of them would, or do, prefer living under the Austrian crown rather than, uh, than the sultans of the east. So, with that said, before we continue the campaign, we do need to take a look at the rest of Europe, and um, though some have said that it is best for Austria to perhaps make peace with the Ottomans now, return the territory that they have, um, or that, that rather we have taken, and simply wait until Austria is either more economically powerful or more uh, technologically advanced to where the um, to where the Ottomans would be an easier target. It is unfortunately not a luxury we can afford. Sweden and Norway are at each other's throats already. Prussia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth are at war, and um, Russia and Sweden have also declared war on each other and uh, are at odds. France is fighting the United uh, Provinces, which is basically the Netherlands and its colonies. Spain is also getting involved in some of these wars, and uh, Britain and France will most likely uh, will most likely end up enemies before um, before the year is um, is over, or uh, at the very least within within the next year. And though most of their fighting will be contained in the colonies, it is not impossible that we will see some uh, naval or even land uh, warfare here in Europe between those. So all of Europe is basically in flames, and um, superpowers will rise from all of this. Um, 
and as a result, Austria does not have the the um, luxury of waiting around and uh, seeing what will happen, Le uh, lest it will simply become a second-grade power and, uh, and, a, and a minor nation, a regional regional power and a regional um, regionally influential state. Uh, but that is that is not something that the Austrians will. Um, are willing to let happen basically uh, they they want to remain a world superpower and a territorial expansion in the south is the only way to do that currently so with that said i haven't exactly said anything new we knew all of this before we will need to get rid of this army but not yet we are still replenishing here the um, ammunition forces and so on and so forth that we've lost uh, we are fortunate however to have one of the greatest generals in Europe, perhaps, um, currently with us, so hopefully we will be able to take out any uh, future Ottoman reinforcements coming in this general direction. That said, though, there will be some, not many, but some reinforcements headed um, towards Bosnia soon because we do need to take the capital of Sarajevo and effectively cut the Ottomans off from uh, from this coastal region and from this part of the Balkans. This will narrow the front line down quite significantly, um, so this city must fall. Anyways, let's see what the Ottomans do first. And it appears that they are willing to attack Belgrade whilst we are weakened. Um, I will decline this attack though, as they haven't actually besieged the city yet, they've just moved in uh, in proximity and they've raided a village. And that's alright. Uh, they are still... Uh, they've raided much uh, Well, that's okay. Um, Crimea has been destroyed though, this is very good news for us. This means that the um, threat from the east is now significantly lessened, and if the Russians can take over Moldavia as well, that would be a tremendous help to the war effort. However, uh, Russians pushing further down south would actually be a problem for our war goals, but anyways. Um, considering the fact that we know what is precisely in Moldavia, and that they have four regiments of, um, four army regiments there, one cavalry, three infantry. I believe we can leave Transylvania undefended like this, especially taking into consideration the fact that there is no road between Transylvania and Moldavia. Moldavia, sorry. Uh, it, the, the road is actually covered in forests and mountains, and it will take an extremely long amount of time for any army to uh, cross this this unsuitable terrain, let's say. So, with that said, we actually, uh, that, that, that means we'll have reinforcements down south from this fort over here, which of course is glorious. Um, and we will see not one, but two Austrian armies at work. Lovely. Now, one of them will not come in with artillery, unfortunately, because it is, once again, fixed. Uh, they will not be able to move it in in time to participate in the battle, but... Here we are, then, near the village of Machva. And, uh, well, it is a far, far more pleasant day than, uh, than the last battle we've had in the region, so... With all of that said, let us begin uh, deploying our forces, and we'll deploy them in more or less a similar manner as uh, as last time. It served us well, and there is no reason to change the tactic so far, at least. Um, though I am going to try and adopt a little bit more of a defensive stance, if at all possible, try and use our uh, fixed artillery more than last time, and uh, wait for the enemy to come to us, which I kind of doubt that they are willing to do, but be that as it may. 
It is up to us to try. Well, we are able to lay down some very effective artillery fire on them right now. We'll see how they uh, maneuver uh, to perhaps stop or prevent that in the future. For now, though, we do need to focus on our reinforcements, which are arriving from hmm, the opposite flank of... Uh, or, or rather, the rear of... Uh, the Ottoman army, that is quite nice. And they are cavalry and light infantry reinforcements, which means the Ottomans basically have no chances of, of catching them out of position. Um, the light infantry, they, they will not actually be able to see at all. Uh, they will use these forests and uh, bushes and, and, and whatnot to hide as they approach the Ottomans from the rear. This will be quite the devastating maneuver. There is one regiment of uh, militia that they might react to and see, but I doubt that will make much of a difference. Oh no, there, is actually, there isn't actually light infantry down here, I've, I've, I was mistaken. Oh, okay. I thought we had light infantry coming from the south. But apparently not. Alright, it would appear... Um, yes, it would appear the Ottomans are actually going to move towards us and try and attack, which... I don't exactly blame them, but perhaps try and move away from the artillery and attack the forces down south. Maybe that's a better option, but hey. Do not interrupt your enemy once, uh, well, or rather when they are making a mistake. Right, here we are then. Um, what I assume is going to be the main battle has indeed been joined, and uh, we will need to slightly just re-maneuver our line infantry to put them in range of the enemy. I have, however, been caught out a little bit down here. There are three additional Ottoman regiments now. Most of them have taken some serious have, uh, some serious artillery fire, but nowhere near enough to not be a danger. Um, we're going to position our infantry behind the wall here and uh, see what they do. And obviously, cavalry has taken fair bit of casualties, so we will need to uh, move those. Spotting the enemy and, and, and firing at them will be a bit of a challenge in these hillocks and, and bushes, though. But I believe our cannons are doing a tremendous job. Quite marvellous indeed, yes. Um, I think now is the time where we might want to be a little bit more aggressive. And actually take these positions over here. Um, also, engage the Ottomans pretty much immediately. Position our forces here on the hill, over there, and uh, fire on them over there. As they're charging down the hill, or as they're um, forming up down the hill, shoot at them. But most importantly, take these positions next to, the, next to the, this, this um, long, long wall here, and try and engage the Ottomans thusly. Over here, they are more than likely to try and outmaneuver us, but that's okay. We do have cavalry if need be. Let's move in the light infantry too. Uh, 
Oh, now this is not something I expected. They've actually charged within melee range. Um, I've not expected this at all. And it is somewhat foolish, but we shall see how effective they are in melee. I suspect not that effective. They are new and relatively inexpensive troops. Swift cavalry charge or two, uh... Oh. Well. Congratulations, I suppose. I did not expect that. No, nope, very well. Um, our units are indeed routing. And the cavalry will probably route as well. We need to uh, we need to withdraw. Yeah. The the southern flank has, has just been lost, or the the southern army group, I suppose, has just been lost. Uh, we're just going to need to take our losses there and and retreat. We are winning in the center, though. We are absolutely annihilating the enemy in the center. Interestingly enough, this is... Oh, once again they... they Approach... And look for a melee fight. Um, this, this is quite... Unconventional, shall we say, for European uh, warfare, but they are not exactly... Uh, in Europe at this stage, or at least the majority of their empire is not. So, in some respects, it is actually to be expected of them to, to follow such um, unorthodox tactics. And it does play to their advantage. They absolutely um, are better at melee than we are. Their troops train in melee more, though, to take a look at this. Uh, Force and say that it trains is a bit of a well. It's being a bit generous to the to the Ottoman army currently present in the Balkans, but um, at any rate, we have the superior firepower. They have the superiority in melee. That, that is clear as day. Though, it's not that simple, because we do have cavalry currently on the battlefield, and they do not. And the Hussars do make for uh, excellent forces when it comes to dealing with enemy infantry. Be it line or light. Currently, at least, until the uh, proper Ottoman cavalry arrives from somewhere else in the world we will have this advantage of, uh, of cavalry. Now, I believe these are probably the most advanced uh, probably the most advanced units in the in the Ottoman army currently and they are matchlock muskets. Um, which is, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's not good. <laughs> it is not good. If that's their most advanced, um, rifle unit on the battlefield, that is, that, that speaks volumes about, um, our current advantage over them, but it's actually not that big of a difference on the, on the battlefield, if you can believe that. Um... We do, officially, have superior uh, infantry and, and are better at um, 
firefights, but in reality, as you can see by the casualties on both sides, it's uh, it's not that simple. All right, let's try and. Uh, it's not that much. There's not enough elevation here, but we can try and hit those those forces over there, I suppose. It will demoralize them if nothing else. And I'm just hoping we don't hit our own soldiers in the process too much. Right, now the cavalry has a most vital role to play in all of this. And that is actually chasing the enemy down. Um, the infantry will rout them, and I don't want to charge my horses into oncoming fire. But... I do need someone to chase the, uh, the enemy down. Alright, let's cease fire here. And I believe the day is ours. Uh, we do need to route a few of these units once again, but... I don't expect that to represent any sort of problem whatsoever. I would say the day is ours, with some significant, significant casualties. Um, it might seem like a... I'm going to continue here. It might seem like a complete and total victory. Fortunately, it is not that simple. And the reason being, just to replenish, I forgot we're still firing, just to replenish our forces is going to take most of the resources we have allocated for um, for the war, which means basically there will be no reinforcements soon, um, or perhaps even more so than, than in the near future to the front lines, but credit where credit is due, the um, current forces are doing a tremendous job, and we don't exactly need reinforcements right now. We do a little bit, but not all that much. Anyways, this has been a very successful battle. Something extremely important happening right now is our units are gaining veterancy. The more veterancy they gain, the better, ob uh, I mean, fairly obviously, the better they're going to be at um, fighting, and yeah, like I said, that there goes most of the budget. Um, the better they're going to be at fighting, but we will need to replace them eventually as well with uh, with better units from from Vienna. So perhaps. The fact that we can't exactly flood the um, the front lines with as many troops as we'd like will play to our advantage later down the line uh, when we will actually have some superiority over the Ottomans. But for now, for now, we are left with all the forces that we currently have and no more. Right then. Um, that was it for this battle. Let's see what the uh, what the Ottomans do next. It is November in the seventeen hundreds, and on the same, well, in seventeen hundred specifically, and the Ottoman army is nowhere to be seen. Um, well, any significant Ottoman army from the east is nowhere to be seen yet. They could be on their way, um, they could be as close as Istanbul or even Sofia, or they could be stuck in um, 
somewhere in the Middle East still, we don't know. However, uh, like I said, the Ottomans will begin re recruiting locally and defending their positions, and uh, Sarajevo, all of a sudden, is not only just well defended, is now becoming a strategic threat. Um, they can recruit only the most basic of units in the... Um, in the city itself, however, they can recruit a fair number of them, and uh, I assume some reinforcements were able to make their way here through Bulgaria and, uh, well, they don't control Greece, but perhaps they did have some forces down uh, near Thessalonica or um, these Macedonian farmlands. Anyways. All of that said and done, we do finally have the opportunity to receive some reinforcements, and uh, we're going to be getting Deutsche Linien Infanterie, three of those, as well as one regiment of cannons. A field artillery regiment from Silesia has been sent from Breslau because uh, the forces up here effectively if we do end up being at war with some power in the north or west, uh, these forces here will be tasked more or less exclusively with defense, and artillery is not something that they exactly need when defending um, fortified cities or uh, forts or anything along those lines. So, with that said, I am going to retreat the army of Guido von Stein. Tarhemberg, I believe, is how that, how he's called, uh, back to, basically, towards Transylvania, and merge up with, uh, yeah, that'll work, merge up with this one regiment of irregulars, and effectively, that's it. I will start moving towards Sarajevo and position my army on the road here to more more so to stop them from leaving than uh, than anything else as we impatiently await additional reinforcements the cannons will be here soon but uh, the infantry will take a while Unfortunately. Um, I do kind of want a sixth rate ship of the line. Oh, so no, it's not a ship of the line. It's just a sixth rate ship. Um, it's merely a frigate. Nothing special. Um, however, in the Mediterranean Sea, currently, unlike the Pacific and the um, Atlantic and so on and so forth, there aren't actually that many ships in general, but there aren't that many warships, and the few that there are, as you can see by the Navy of Venice, are mostly just light galleys, and okay, there's one heavier ship there, but it's a Venetian ship. The Ottoman Navy is actually extremely numerous, but they operate almost exclusively small and light galleys, so... Um, we might... F a sixth-rate frigate could take out a few galleys, no problem, keep them at range and just circle around them, and we might actually get some value out of it by simply raiding the ports of the Ottomans, or maybe eventually getting to some of their... Um, uh, more important positions down here, and it will it will cripple their economy at least a little bit. Uh, we need every advantage that we can get, so there's that. Let's also take a look at the ministries, uh, well, not the ministries, but the ministers, rather. Uh, see if we can't find anyone that will perhaps do a better job than, uh, than people already in, in office. Not really, okay. Uh, the popularity of the government is increasing, which is not something that uh, I don't think anyone expected. 
but it is happening. The popularity of the government is rising significantly, um, even though we are fighting a fairly dubious war and, and a very fairly risky war. Uh, it appears that due to the various programs and um, investment in infrastructure and, and culture and, and in the industry, uh, we, we are stabilizing the country a little bit more. And the risk of revolution is uh, well, fairly low. Um, I've just realized I can't leave Belgrade. That is a problem. All right. Let's stay in Belgrade for now, not exempted from taxes, and that's about it. We can't... Like, religious unrest is a problem, it's mostly resistance to foreign occupation. Which will go down, especially when we build the Governor's Palace, which we are building now. This will reduce, but... Mm. We shall see, I suppose. Oh, uh, right, I feared this would happen, uh, but this is the reason I hold this fort. We must defend this fort, we absolutely must. Um, it is a exceptionally large Ottoman army coming, but as you can see, a lot of their units are heavily depleted. Um, these are the units that we've beaten in Serbia previously. They've retreated towards Bosnia, and now they're, I guess, launching a counterattack, um, trying to spread our forces out, which makes a lot of sense. Um, numerically, we're kind of in a, in a similar position, but we do have a fort, which is a significant advantage if used properly. Um, this will be a most interesting battle, so I guess this is, uh, this is what we're going to be focusing on next time. Until then, have fun, take care, and bye-bye.